Thank you so much your prime morning and it's time for us to delve into what the newspapers have for us. It's time for News Flash and it's probably brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Now I always say that if you're looking for a gadget to buy, now not just a regular gadget but an authentic gadget to make sure that you go to Franco Trading Enterprise because they have that and even many, many more. Of course they have mobile phones, they have, uh, you know what, laptops, they have fridges, tabletop fridges, they have freezers, deep freezers, they have um, CCTV cameras, air conditions, everything that you're looking for. Now, all you have to do is to download the app on your phone. So you go to Google Play Store and download the app, which is Franco Trading app, or you can visit our website, which is francotradingenterprise.com. Franco Trading Enterprise, still phone pepper pair for you. So my guests are seated. And uh, this I'm having them for the first time, actually, so I don't know how it's going to go, but I, I know that it's going to go well, very, very well. <laughs> so let me introduce my guests to you, and then we delve into the newspapers. So my first guest is Bashiru Amatana. I hope I got your name right. Amatana. All right, so he's representing the NDC this morning. How are you? I'm good, ma'am. It's good to see you. I'm only 25 years, though. All right. Okay. <laughs> and I have Emmanuel Senor Amekplenu. I hope I got your name right as well. well. Great. And he's representing the NPP this morning. So welcome, gentlemen, to our humble abode. Thank First you time much. being here. Thank you. How does it feel? It feels great. Uh, I think um, the first time being on uh, Joy Prime, I yeah. think it's a nice studio. Thank uh, you. Seeing very beautiful people around. That only that uh, that only that encourages me to continue coming here. That is if the opportunity is given. Okay. Yes. So uh, I've I've met such wonderful people, mm -hmm. and I hope that um, my brother will be wonderful too. At least the first time meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the first time the yeah. two of you are meeting yes, too. Yeah, oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> yeah so um, I want to say good morning to His Excellency John Ramani Mahama, the nation builder. I think. Um, you might have to speak up a bit. Okay, though. invariably we we know that the only hope for Ghana now is His Excellency John Ramani Mahama. We are here today to at least plead to the conscience of Ghanaians that this is the only person that can at least leverage the people of Ghana from this kind of suffering we are going through today. We've seen his ruling. We've seen the ruling of these people, uh, the MPP government. And at least you can tell who has performed well and who hasn't performed well. And so uh, a very good morning to him. Uh, we believe by all means, inshallah, by the grace of God, the Ghanaian people will give him the nod to be president come December, 20, uh, come, come, uh, December uh, 7th. So obviously we are hoping that uh, God gives us life Right. to get to that day. Okay, Bashiru. Thank you. Imano? Yeah, Rosalind. A very good morning to your cherished viewers. And I think that this is my first time coming to your yes. new site. I've uh, had a privilege to be at your uh, other side before. Um, I must say that it's a nice studio. Uh, let me also use the opportunity to say a very good morning to His Excellency Nana Dodan Kufado and the incoming president, Inshallah, come. 2025, January 7th, Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Today he will be launching the Kaye program in Medina. <coughs> I want to use the opportunity to entreat each and everyone to come out in their numbers and then get to know what this program is all about. And trust me, as he has always said and as he has always trumpeted, there is nothing that is impossible in this world. Everything is possible. Good morning to your church. Right. Good morning once again, Emmanuel. Let me quickly read what the newspapers have for us. And uh, we urge you to join us. Now, you know our topics for this morning. We are talk We are still on the SNIT uh, saga, the sale of 60% shares in some hotels to the agri-minister. Now, TUC has spoken. TUC is not too happy about it. Now, the first reason is that this man <coughs> is actually a member of the state, talking about he being a minister of state. Hence, this should not even happen. It's wrong in the first place. Second reason is the fact that the money does not belong to SNIT. So SNIT should not uh, be on their own to make such a decision to sell a state property to uh, the minister for our Greek. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll also talk about the fact that we are in election year. And of course, uh, during election year, there'll be a lot of comments that will be made. Some statements will be made as well. Now, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who is a flag bearer of the NPP, has said that John Dramani Mahama should give him the opportunity 
to take up the mantle because John Dramani Mahama has been a president before, whereas he has not been a president before. Let's hear your voices this morning like we always do. want to apologize that yesterday we couldn't read your messages. So today, please, as much as possible, we'll try to read almost every message. I'm promising you this. I'm going to try to read almost every message. Yesterday, it didn't happen. Let me start with the Insight newspaper, the Insight. Alleged illegal exportation of gold by Adamus Resources, CSO Petitions President, Chief Justice and Speaker. New Force Leader Nana Kwame Bediako calls on EC to extend duration for limited voter registration. SMG commiserates with Iran over tragic death of President Ibrahim Raisi and eight others. And this happened yesterday, I think dawn. In other countries, probably you say it happened uh, not yesterday, but two days ago. But for some time with Ghana, it happened yesterday, dawn for Ghana. As NCA celebrate World Telecommunication and Information Society Day, Dr. Joe Anoche reveals Ghana's digital agenda is geared towards the nation's digital economy. We'll do the Economy Times newspaper next. Now, I'm excited about it, but I don't know if it's going to happen. I don't know. Ghana City to rebound. We have heard this so many times. So uh, as it's rebounding, what, what, what is going to be the ratio? Should I ask you? Don't, you people should not rebound it to like one Ghana, uh, $1 to um, 12 cities and tell us it's rebound. That's not rebound. Rebound should take us back to six cities or five cities or something. That's rebound. Well, I think that, just as I said, there is nothing that is impossible. Uh, I'm sure that uh, in due course, things will rebound to its normal stage. Yes, we all agree that um, the dollar is actually skyrocketing, but I believe that the vice president and its team, his team, together with the entire government, they've seen what is actually going on. They are not sleeping at all. They are trying as much as possible to ensure that things come back to its normalcy. So I only plead with Ghanaians that indeed we accept the fact that yes, things are not normal, but we are also not sleeping on the job. We are actually working uh, tirelessly to ensure that we come back to its normalcy. Mm. Rebound. <coughs> you think it can happen? Well, I think um, mm. uh, they speak a lot and they do little. And when they speak of rebounds, anytime they talk of rebounds, that means that they are going to hype, or let me say, they're just going to talk, and at the end of the day, nothing will happen. What you need to know is that mismanagement does not rebound city. What you need to know is that corruption does not rebound city. What you need to know is that dancing on stage does not rebound cities. It takes pure commitment. But what has dancing on stage got to do with hmm. That means you are not taking your activity serious. No, I dance all the time, but I work as I dance. No. And I still deliver. Not when you have gone to, when you are, when you are on a pl campaign platform to sell good messages or new uh, uh, properties to the people. When people are surrounding you, when you have to tell them what you are supposed to do for the Ghanaian people to be able to rebound the city. Now, any anything he says, and we will try to question, he says he's joking. They have now <laughs> resorted to taking Ghanaians for uh, a ride, and any time uh, they want to joke, they think that Ghanaians are the people that uh, they would use to uh, create fun. This does not rebound this day. BOG likely to hold policy rate. Ghana awaits 200 million US dollars from ECOWAS Bank. We'll do the new finder newspaper next. Hold sale of state hotels to Brian A. Champon, says TUC, and this is our main topic for today. You can make a difference in seven months, President tells new ministers and deputies. Ghost chop 2.8 million Ghana cities. Ghost to. They have chopped. 2.8 million Ghana cities, while OSB controller saved 34.2 million Ghana cities. Now, will OSB stay in office or OSB is going to go? Let's not forget that somewhere last week, there was a petition to remove the OSB from office. The Daily Guide newspaper is our final newspaper. Nana meets majority and minority. Two Togolese arrested over for voter fraud. Ochehene launches 25th anniversary, extend registration timeline, and Akwame Bediako tells EC. Um, let me go to the center spread. Sometimes we do get some entertainment stories, so let's see what's in there.
Okay, so um, Kim Promise wins heart at Ottawa concert. DJ Kapi's mom prays for her to find true love. <laughs> Fala McAfee threatens the legal action against medical. Uh, huh, things are happening. <laughs> anyway, sports, West Ham set to appoint a new manager. Is Arsenal not doing the same? Because Arsenal fans are, are crying. Oh. <laughs> club licensing a unified standards across African clubs. Black Star Marathon announced sponsors and Godola hints at city exit. Hey, people will cry. Pep Godola, you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> they won't allow you to go. Anyway, like we said earlier, uh, we need you to join us. And we apologize that yesterday we couldn't read your messages. But today we'll try as much as possible to read almost all, even if not all, 80% of the messages will be read today. So please do send in your messages. Now, we are speaking on the fact that TUC is asking SNIT to halt the sale of about four hotels to the Agric Minister. Now, it all started when Honorable Okujetua Blakwa petitioned uh, Shraj to invest investigate the sale of about six hotels. Now, he, he actually, the petition was for six hotels that were to be sold to the Agric Minister. Now, Snit came out to say that they actually issued, um, you know, out in publications that they were selling it so people should bid for it. There were other people that bid it, but however, uh, the Agric Minister seemed to have won that bid, not for all six, but four of the hotels. Now, uh, Honorable Kujetua Blackwa did say that it didn't go to Parliament for approval, hence the should be an investigation. Now, as this is going on, TUC decides to speak on it, and they are telling SNIT that that money does not belong to SNIT, it belongs to the people who are contributing. You wake up in the morning, you go to work, you get your salary, and guess what? You ought to pay SNIT by law, whether you like it or not. If you don't pay, country will come after you. So you are paying, you are toiling, and you are paying, and this money, has been used to build state properties. Now you wake up one day and you're being told that some of these properties are being sold. It's your money and it's being sold. TUC says no, there should be a halt with immediate effect. Shraj is still investigating though. We don't know what the end result will be, but we still have to discuss this conversation this morning. And so let me start this conversation with you, Emmanuel. Um, your take on it. Well. Uh, I think that TUC within its um, confines actually has the right as far as uh, workers are concerned. I think that's their main reason for probably uh, this press conference that they are actually having or that they've held. Uh, indeed, one will be wondering what would have been the motive behind halting or calling for a halt of the process. Um, I've asked myself a series of questions, whether this whole process started in an opaque manner or not. But from where I sit and what I read, it tells me that the whole process actually took place in a very transparent manner. There was a tender that was open to the public. And the prospective people who actually showed interest at the end of the second phase of opening tender when the one uh, transaction advisor was actually um, contracted to look into this. At the end of the day, out of the nine people who actually showed interest, six of them were actually shortlisted. Now, out of that six, the transaction advisor sees to it that the only person who has the financial muscles to actually um, benefit or to take up this whole process is Honorable Brian Achapo or Rock City. Now, Russell, you agree with me again that the name in question here, he's not a stranger to us. That is one thing we should ask. Whether the person, Honorable Brian Achapo, he has some sort of credibility within the business enclave or not. This is somebody, even whilst his party was in opposition, he even enjoyed the state businesses where the then government gave him a contract. So that tells you that he has 100% credibility. A contract being given is not you selling state assets. So you see, it is just as government agencies. 
it is a government agency that awarded the contract to him. And again, it is the same government property that is being sold out. And he has shown interest to acquire 60% of shares. The problem here that. is the sale of the, of, of the property. Now, the problem again I asked, or the question I asked again is that, is it bad if he, as a businessman, of course, Rock City, if you look at the whole Ghana and even Africa-wise, is one of the leading, not just one of the leading, but the most leading hotel businesses as we have today. He has shown the muscles that indeed, in terms of business-wise and that industry, he has the financial muscles to be able to, you know, execute. But did you say he's the most, Rock City is the most leading? Is that what you said? As of today, to the best of my knowledge, in terms of having the best luxury hotel, in terms of the number of rooms in Ghana, I think that he's leading. To you? Yes. Okay, that's your, your opinion. And I'm sure you are aware of over 2,000 plus rooms that he's hoping to have. I'm in... not aware. Okay, so I, I guess you should probably read a bit. No, 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 about... you say hoping, so I can yeah. be aware of hoping. I can be aware if it exists, <laughs> but hoping there, I, I can I, be I am sure office. probably after the show, you may want to probably <laughs> read a bit about Rock City. But like I said, I think that um, Rock City, your Honorable Brian, has exhibited or shown to the public that he has the financial muscles to be able to take up this uh, project. Like I again indicated, there is nowhere that we may probably want to feel that, oh, this gentleman does not have what it takes to actually, you know, manage these businesses. He has done it before, even whilst his government is not in power. Another thing we should even look at is that if, does the constitution even ban, you know, people who have the muscles? Is he also not a Ghanaian? And does the constitution ban people who are in that particular position not to take up the responsibility of managing when opportunity is open to the public? It was an opportunity that was open to the public, and he has shown interest. Now, there's one thing that yesterday that triggered my mind. Where has been all this group of people? TUC has a rep on the board. Honorable Kujeto Ablaka, who last week Friday brought up this issue on that, your other sta uh, one other station. Where has it been all of this while? But my further checks reveals that it seems to me that we have come as a country where almost every single thing we want to politicize is. Where even we know that, oh, this person can even do it. But because of politics that has cloned our eyes, we want to always politicize everything. Why won't it be politicized if you have a state property that is being sold to a minister of state? That is questionable. You know, um, the state contributes to something. We contribute our quota to it. We wake up in the morning. I pace in it. And I know, I don't know about you gentlemen, but I know about 80% of Ghanaian workers or 90% pay SNIT. Now you wake up one day and you are being told that your contribution is being sold to somebody who is a minister of state. And after it's being sold, where is that 60% shares going to? Where is that money going to? Who is it going to? So it's a question that you are asking, and that is it's just a fair question, especially being a minister of state. Now, we have seen a lot of state assets that have been sold. We've seen we've lost Ghana Waste, we've lost Ghana Telecom. We are about to lose hotels too. You are going to lose Labadi Beach Hotel, you're losing La Palm, you're losing Elmina Beach Resort. I mean, so to, to what extent? So, Rosalind, let me ask you, as a worker in joy, or multimedia. Does that mean that multimedia knowing your stand in terms of your financial models, does that mean that if they publicly open that they are selling one of their shares and you happens to be somebody who is known, despite the fact you are working with them, you happen to be the one who they have recognized that you can buy that shares. You want to tell me that if you have interest, you will not go in for it because you feel that you are, you are a worker within the multimedia. So we, so we, we talk about state properties. Mm -hmm. We are not talking about private properties here. I, and I, I am I only it, making a reference. You see? No, because your reference that you are making, mm -hmm. sorry I'm, I'm interjecting, but that's not what I, I, I intend to do. 
the reference that you are making mm -hmm. is completely mm -hmm. null and void. You think you are so? Making, yes, because you are making a reference to the fact that multimedia, being a private entity mm -hmm. where I do not contribute and mm -hmm. I don't have anything to do with multimedia, says they are selling. If multimedia wants to sell, whoever owns multimedia will have to consult the co-owners of multimedia mm -hmm. before selling. Mm -hmm. You don't just get up and sell it. And you think so, that... So, so for, for that, SNIT should... And that's where TUC comes in. And you think that the shareholders were not consulted before? You're a shareholder. You're a shareholder. I'm a shareholder. Mm -hmm. I wasn't consulted. Unless there's a shareholder out there who is contributing. Are you aware of the publications that were done? One publication in one day. It was it wasn't just one day. It was one day. In the newspaper. The first the first publication happens on the 14th of November 2018. That was in the Daily Graph. It was all in 2022. The no, 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 that no, 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 no. It started. It, this is what they said. They said they made two. So it, it would have been prudent day. that we also take further steps to cross check. But I'm also telling you that in November 2018, 14th of November, there was the first publication that was done in the Daily Graphics. Okay. And then the same November 15th, there was another publication in Ghanaian Times. Again, in the international media, uh, Economist, it was also published between the 5th to 11th of January 2019. So that tells you that this whole announcement did not start just yesterday. It started somewhere far back before yesterday. And this whole thing started before Honorable Brana Chapo became a minister of state. Okay. So I don't see it uh, where, why he should not take up this position when he has actually showed interest before taking up the position. When did he become even All right, a minister so of state? Let me, let me clear what you're saying. And what you're saying, this is what Snit says. According to Snit, the strategy to partner with an investor to raise capital to invest in their hotels and also assist in their management started as far back as 2018. This doesn't mean that publication was made in 2018. Now they further say that um, they further say that it's noted that following this further advertisement for an expression of interest, that is EOI, for a strategic partner for the SNIT hotels, were placed in daily graphic on the 3rd of February 2022 and in the Ghanaian Times on 7th of February 2022. So negotiations started behind the scenes, but publication was made in 2022. One in the daily graphic and the other in Ghanaian Times. That's it. The publications were done not yes. just in 2022. That's what they said. This is not my statement. This is coming from SNIT. Th that, is why, that is why it is prudent that we as as within your your media space. I have made you my do research. Check. I have done my further check. And I'm and telling you the that checks, these are the reports that the checks have made. I'm telling you that this whole thing started. You see, they were very smart not to tell you that it was an advertisement. They only make it opaque. They didn't actually tell you whether it was an advertisement. They said this whole process started way back, 2018. That tells you that the process actually started and there were publications. No, that's Since, what they said. They said. That is how, what I'm telling you. Unless I it know is that communication. No. They know what they are also no. arriving at. This is what Snit said. Mm -hmm. And Snit says, mm -hmm. in the press release, mm -hmm. the trust stated that the process, mm -hmm. please, I don't know if my English is <laughs> that. The process started in November 2018 mm -hmm. after it had employed a transaction advisor. Mm -hmm. It means process. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean publication. Mm -hmm. It further says mm -hmm. that it noted that following this further advertisement for an EOI for a strategic partner for Snit Hotels, it was placed in the daily graphic. So now this is the advertisement date. Daily graphic, 3rd February 2022. Ghanaian Times, 7th February 2022. So process and advert being placed to the audience is different. It is not. Okay. The process involves the advertisement. Okay. If there is the lead to something, it takes one step to the other. And the whole process comes in as far as advertisement is concerned. And this whole advertisement started in 2018 and came down to... 20, stop doing that, <laughs> Rosalind. And came down to 2022. So that tells you that they have, they have actually followed due process in doing all of these things. But my question is, like I asked earlier, where were all these group of people when this whole thing were being done? Why are we now seeing 
red flags being raised by Honorable Okujeto Ablakpa. Where was he? Wherever he is getting his information from, were those people not aware of this thing since 2018? Even let's even say that 20, beginning of this year or even last year, were they not aware of all of these things? But my further checks reveal that, you see, that's why I keep saying that let's not hide behind any politics. I pay tax or I pay snakes, I do contribution, you equally do just like any other Ghanaians. For that matter, we should be concerned what our monies are being used for. Of course, if, our, if part of our shares is being sold to someone, we should be concerned whether the person has one credibility, whether the person has the muscles to be able to manage the business or not. And this is somebody who has exhibited on countless occasions that indeed he has what it takes to manage that business. Okay. So for me, I think that it is neither here nor there where we will have some group of people for the sake of politics want to downplay on the credibility of Honorable Brian Achampo. Let's put that aside and let's face that fact. Let's face the reality. The reality is, does he have the credibility when, whether he has the muscles to be able to manage these uh, businesses okay. or not? All right, but you're... Uh, uh, I think, first of all, I must commend um, TUC for that bold uh, decision they have taken. I think they have mentioned it all in their statement. They have made us to understand that uh, they are really fighters for uh, this country. I think uh, the statement they brought out must put some little fear in the government. If indeed they are that listening government they say they are, they have to listen to what they are saying and then listen to their decision. <clears throat> uh, but I think that it's not a surprising thing for me because this government has narrow government governance to uh, either borrowing, corruption, if not these two, then they are either renaming or selling. These are some of the achievements. Bashir, I'll so have far. to come back to you. I just okay. want people at home to join us. We are streaming live on Facebook, actually, so you can join us on Facebook as we stream live. Make sure you hit the share button. Let everybody on your timeline enjoy it. Make sure you leave your comments there as well because we will read it. Today, like, the promise is that we are definitely going to read it. Uh, let me see if I have some comments on Facebook already so that <laughs> you Facebook, my Facebook fans will not feel like I'm leaving them, uh, you know, hanging. Asante Timora Abbas says, it's so sad that MPP communicators go for programs unprepared. Um, he's very prepared. He came with his things. Why, why do people do that? I don't like when you do that to my guests. <laughs> um, all right, so you can also send in your messages. Asante Moro continues to say, Master, do you work as states? Must you defend everything? Um, let's see. You can also send in your messages to us. I, okay, so I think I have some messages here. Uh, that we will read, and this is coming from, okay, so this is coming from, uh, I just pity those who still want to vote for MPP and Dr. Baumia. Voting for Baumia is a vote for President Ekufuado's third term. The same group of people will rule Ghana again. So let's all join hands together and vote for NDC and John Mahama, 7th December, to come and rescue Ghana from this hardships from Abladi Ifiekuma Zongo. Let's not forget that this segment is probably brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Now, if you are looking for any gadgets, please go to Franco Trading Enterprise and get your gadgets. It's very, very important that you do that. Now, is it mobile phones you want? Is it television sets that you want? Is it CCTV cameras that you want? All that you want, please go ahead and purchase it from there. Okay, so let's see if we have some more comments coming in. So this one says, good morning to you, madam, and to your wonderful panelists. Madam, MPP and its officials are doing all their possible best to make sure that after they leave office, even a needle will not be left for the future generation, from land looting to taking off hotels. Madam, when you come to... Madam, when you come to uh, Tamale and see what these people are doing to state land, you will cry. Madam, let me also use your good platform to show appreciation to the good MP for Tamale South, Honorable Haruna, for giving out large piece of land at Dator Yeli to a particular organization which is building houses for the needy and poor in the society. In fact, he's too much. We are proud of him. Sumani Hamza. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We do. Today, I, I said I'm going to try to 
read as many messages as possible. Please pardon me. Okay, so I do have a lot of messages, though. All right, so this one says, Madam Host, Ekufado and Baumia are like empty sack that cannot stand upright unless it's filled with solid things. Ekufado and his cronies, family and friends, have plundered and pillaged <laughs> the Ghanaian economy as if there is no tomorrow. On the planned removal of Kisie Jabin, the special prosecutor is so sad that anyone who fights corruption, corruption will fight back in Ekufuado's government, according to Daniel Domlevo. If Ghanaians vote for Baumia, it will be an what, egregious mistake that cannot be corrected. Ekufuado will be the most corrupt, incompetent, and the worst president ever in the history of Ghana. My greetings to you, Bernard Mona and the NDC panelists. I'm proud of your TV station. Good morning, dear Charles Echample. Thank you so much, Charles. We are super proud of the fact that you sent us a message too. Thank you. All right, so this one says, I'm surprised that the full epileptic fall of the city is happening under the watch of someone who claimed to have 170 ways of reviving the economy. The vice presidency has been reduced drastically to mere rhetorics and drama. In fact, we are suffering today because of the sheer incompetence, clear mismanagement, and the unprecedented failure of the people at the helms of affairs. As if that's not enough, they have at this time resorted to capturing state properties for themselves. I know President Mahama will ensure that these thieves are brought to book when he resumes office in 2025. Al Hassan Sise from Zeno Central says, Good morning to you all. Moving our country from taxation to production as we were promised by this incompetent liability driver and his mate in 2016 is now moving our state properties to the NPP big men in power. Properties of snakes is a classical example. Looting of state lands and other properties on the blind side of Ghanaians. NPP never again. Good morning to you, Roslyn, and your panelists. Please tell the NPP guy to stop annoying us the more with his business. <laughs> oh, come on. The truth is, that greed, selfishness, and wickedness of our current politicians are legendary. Those who are managing our state assets are intentionally running them down so that they can sell them to themselves. Recently, the president appointed Dr. Is it Din Diok, who is a parliamentary candidate to bust breast so that uh, so how do you expect the man to work effectively with his divided attention? Because very soon he will abandon his work to campaign. Sad. Mayor Brown Simon. Okay. Oh, I kiss me. Honorable, I kiss me. Good morning to you. Good morning, beautiful Rosalind President Anado. We are concerned about the sale of state owned hotels to Brian Echampo, a member of your administration. This transaction raises serious questions about conflict of interest, transparency, and accountability. We urge you to, number one, provide full disclosure of the sale process and terms. Two, explain why a state asset was sold to a government official. Three, assure us that the sale was conducted fairly and without undue influence. Four, take steps to prevent similar conflicts of interest in the future. Ghanaians deserve transparency and accountability in government dealings. Regards to CEO of A&A &A Drinking Water, Master J.E. Inside Sitri Bekwai. Francis Arthur Atamasaman, those who know your life, know your life. Some of us recognize the fact that you are above such primitive political conjecture. Dr. Dramani Mahama, only him can save us from Nana Baumia, notorious government leadership. Hey, sometimes you some of you are English. I like it. Um, my, Mena Majid from Bechem, Toronto says, in fact, it's quite disturbing for NPP big men to be sharing properties that belong to the country. Why should they sell snake hotels to Brian Echampo? Ghanaians are not angry enough. This country can only bounce back by voting massively for JDM come December 7th. My regards to the incoming workaholic MP, Honorable Charles Akwesia Siedu. Honorable Charles Akwesia Siedu has been spreading developmental projects across the constituency while the current MP can't be found. Honorable Charles Nyankwada. Uh, Chorus Call Zakaria says that um, wicked, corrupt, and jealousy in another Baumia government. If war drum Briny Champon is sold snit to, um, Ibrahim Mahama is equally qualified to mine Yinehini bauxite forest. MPP never again. They are thieves. They vote John Dramani Mahama. <laughs> really. The MPP can continue defending the indefensible, but they should know that their exit <laughs> date is numbered. Why should we continue with this disaster government? Everything is not working at all. Let me see if I read this last one. All right, so that'll be it. Um, you can also send in your messages to us, like I told you earlier. 
Make sure you go to Franco Trading Enterprise to get all your gadgets. Is it mobile phones, television sets, is it uh, laptops, CCTV cameras? Just make sure you download the app on your phone, Franco Trading app, and you know, purchase what you want to purchase or visit our website, francotradingenterprise.com. Still, phone papa pf here. So, uh, Bashir, I was talking to you earlier yeah. when so, we had so, to cut so, you. So, so like I was saying, that uh, this government has actually reduced governance to a corruption, taxation. If not these two, then uh, selling and renaming. This is what they do best. Uh, we have seen a deliberate attempt to auction this host in its um, uh, hotels to Brenner Champo. He was asking a question about whether he does not qualify to be uh, a person that they will be selling those properties to. If you would look at Article 90, 98 of our national constitution, that's the National Constitution, and Article 70 of our uh, national national constitution. It spells out all these things. It tells you who becomes a, a complicit of, uh, how, how do you call it, a, a conflict of interest when 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 you engage yourself into some, some some other things. Clearly, the man is a minister of state. We all know that he's a minister of state. Despite the fact that he deals with hotel businesses, does not mean that uh, he's the only person that could uh, can do what can be able to acquire those things. In any case, at all, why are you even selling them? But let's not forget that they still did make some publication. Mm -hmm. What if he's the one who actually is credible enough to buy them? No, he cannot be the one who is credible to buy them. There are a lot of people that are in this But country. people bid it and they didn't... No, they why didn't did they do it in secrecy? They should have brought it out. The whole thing started... The, the publication I'm the whole thing, in secrecy. I'm coming. The whole thing started in uh, 2018, right? Mm. As of 2018, his hotel, I mean, his business was, in, it was not in operation. He started his business in 2019, right? So during the time that they were doing those um, bidding and those things, the initial stage, he was not part of it. It was later on in 2019 when he started his business that they added his name to it. And subsequently, he has become the jack of all. And he's the one going to acquire it. A minister of state, serious conflict of interest. Look, if you go into our constitution and you read the sections I have mentioned to you, it clearly tells you that if you are a minister of state or you are a member of parliament, you do not have to uh, engage in any other businesses unless, of course, you send a letter or you write a letter Please to Please give me, give me the... Uh, yes, if you go to... Go to article one. Yes, Article uh, 78. Have it. You can have it. You can, you can have the constitution. Go to Article 78. Today and read it out to the public. No, continue though. Yes. And so it tells you that... Hey, but where, where it, will I find this? You will find it. Uh, let, me, let me open it for open you. It. Let, me, let me open it for you quickly. Yes. You, you can't let be me. giving me a book, oh, no. closed this book is, and tell me is, to. Yes. This, is, this is Article 90, 98, okay. 98 Read the 98 so, yes. Article 98 yes. Today they've taken me to law school. Yeah. Anyway, a member of parliament shall be paid such salary and allowances and provided with such facilities as may be determined in accordance with Article 71 of the Constitution. A member of parliament shall not hold any office of profit or emolument, whether private or public, and either directly or indirectly, unless permitted to do so by the Speaker acting on recommendation Beautiful. of a committee of parliament on the grounds of that. But most of you have your own business. Continue, you continue, continue. There are some... some a holding that... Of Office will not prejudice the work of a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. And two, uh, no conflict of interest arises or would arise as a result of the member holding that office. But yes. So with these clauses, it means he's permitted. Of right? course, he is permitted. But under only the circumstance that he has written to the, mini, uh, the, the speaker. The parliament, okay. Has he done that? He has not done that. All other people that want to do businesses aside their parliamentary duties has written to the speaker of parliament. And they have been given that approval to go on their normal businesses. So, look, he is setting a certain precedent that we may also follow. Imagine that when a member of parliament goes to sit in parliament and all what he thinks about is his own personal interest. Instead of thinking about the interest of myself and you young people seated here, he's thinking of what he would do and get something into his pocket. People will want to go into be, to become ministers and um, MPs just because they, work, they can be able to acquire properties that belong to the government. Is that what we want in this country? Is that what we want in this country? Mm. At least these um, hotels we are, we are talking about, they yield beautiful dividends to the nation. They're not making losses. They're not making losses. But Slit is saying otherwise. No. What, what is Slit saying? Well, Slit says they are making losses, no. and that's why they are no. selling. They are yielding dividends. You know the amount of monies 
this when you go to La, La Plan Beach, uh, to La Bad Beach, La Bad Hotel. Beach and Hotel and those people, they ch look. I went there. Do I even have to mention the prices? Very well. Mention. Yes, you go there and a, 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 a bottle of water, a bottle, the big one. You can sell it to you thirty Ghana cities. Buffet is five hundred Ghana. Very good. So how on earth can they make losses with this amount, with these charges? It's obviously not true that they make losses. But we have huge taxes. Come again? Our taxes are huge. They are paying huge <laughs> Well, well they, it is for the government. And the government can decide to reduce taxes for them. And they'll make profits if they're not making That is even in case they're not making profit. But from, the, well, from where I sit, I know that um, this, these hotels are making profits. They just they are they are on the trail of making what uh, that stage cap their state capital. They just want to capture the state and have everything to their to, to themselves. That is their uh, aim of being in government. Look, I knew that this was going to happen. Oh, you knew. I knew. Why you're prophet? Look, look I, no, I'm not a prophet, but I knew that this was going to happen. <laughs> when I realized that there was firewood with fire under the pot boiling. And I realized that there was meat in the pot. And I'm saying this because immediately they, they sacked the former uh, boss of Senate I re and then replaced him with the son of the sen former senior minister. I knew that there was something going to happen. But TUC is saying that, look, even if it is meat in the pot that you are boiling, it will turn to stones. Mm. And we will see whether you can, stones can ever be cooked for you to eat. But this, don't you think these hotels are actually not making profit? Don't you think these hotels are struggling with, you know, regards to the management? Look at our CD to the dollar ratio. They go to parliament, of course. We will come there. They go to parliament and then they make their accounts to parliament for those things. Yeah. So the member of parliament for South Tong, Honorable Kujatu, would not have been complaining that the way he's complaining if they were making losses. Look. You've sold uh, Vodafone, Ghana Telecom, and all. Though we complained, but then uh, just recently, when you sold uh, Vodafone, there were little complaints <laughs> with regards to the sale of Vodafone. Though we weren't happy, but there were very little complaints. Look, Senate properties belongs to all of us, like you mentioned. This is what is taking care of your Senate, his Senate, my Senate. This is what encourages me to contribute to Senate mm. because I know that. There is a, there's, there's an, an, uh, investment. A, an investment somewhere that even if Senate is in trouble, that investment can come to cover it. Now, you are gradually selling, you are selling lands, you are selling the Senate property, you are selling all government properties. Forgetting that you have future behind you. Even Heritage Fund, that President Mahama <laughs> gave to us, they have come to squander it. That's why I said I'm not surprised. This is what they, are, they do best. But you, you did see, mention this, that this, this, these hotels have been there, have been in existence for about 35 years. Some of them have been there for about 35 years. Still operating. When you go to Labadi Hotel currently, you know that this is a five-star hotel. This is a beautiful hotel that everybody admires. So under no circumstance can you come and tell me that <laughs> Labadi is not doing well. And so you're going to sell it. I do not support the argument of selling it at all. Let's maintain and keep it. Why are we calling ourselves a self in, a, a, an independent country? Because we are able to manage our affairs. If we are able to manage our affairs, if you can manage the whole Ghana, how can't you manage a hotel? It is only lazy people that only think of uh, selling all the time, selling all the time. It is only lazy people that think of selling all the time. Look, we all manage our own businesses at our own corner. We know that there are ups and downs in every business you do. But when there are downs in your business, you find beautiful solutions to those, uh, those uh, problems of yours, and you revamp it. Sometimes even painting of a, a, a business can change the mentality of people to come back to uh, purchase things from you or to do business with you. Would you have been comfortable if this uh, sale had gone to maybe somebody other than a minister of state? Uh, uh, I think uh, I, I mentioned that I, I personally, I disagree with the whole with, with the wholesale okay. of uh, Senate, Senate, Senate properties. We must not be interested in always selling, 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 and those things. We, 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 we need to know that these are investment that takes care of. Look, you, we have just recently <laughs> gone to do some haircuts, right? And some of these Senate people are affected. Today, after <laughs> haircutting them, you are now going to sell their properties. TUC, like they are, they, are, they are doing, I'm very happy. 
and I, I hope that they continue to do that. We will all support. This one is not about uh, NDC or MPP. You pace it, you are not an NDC. Mm. You pace it, you are not an MPP. It's about ourselves. As a young man like me, if I am aware that there is something that will take care of me when I'm 60 years and above, depending on the, the kind of job I do, some, I think some people take, start their, uh, taking their pension at 70, I stand to be corrected. But then, if I know that at the age of 60 years, I can start taking something small from SNIT, once I leave, at least to buy some, uh, God forbid, if, I'm, if it happens that maybe you are sick or something like that, you can use it to go and buy your drugs and those things. I will be happy to be contributing to SNIT. But when you start to sell SNIT properties this way, who will be happy to contribute to SNIT? Anyway, <laughs> let me come back to you, Manuel. <coughs> it looks like even the people sending you the messages are not too happy with the sale of state properties. And uh, like I said, it's as though every time we hit rock bottom, the next thing is to sell and not to try to revamp, but to sell. Now, selling 60% shares, even if probably they had set 20% shares, I think Guardians would have been more comfortable. But 60%, majority shares, meaning <coughs> that this man will have more say than you and I that contribute to SNIT. Well, that's fair to say, to some extent. But for me, I keep asking whether this whole process was done in the darkness. No, it wasn't done in the darkness. It was open. It was transparent. It was for everybody who think that they have the capacity to be able to manage these businesses, to show interest. And of course, 60%, somebody will say that is far, far, far too much. Why not? Maybe. 20% as you suggested. But I think that the management or the shareholders in their own wisdom felt that this is what they want to give out. And having open tender for us to go through the procurement process and all of that, they felt that indeed he merits the kind of demands they are looking out for. The things they've outlined, he merits it. Now, it comes to play that if you're a public official and even coming in as a private person or a business person, people who want to question your mind why, as a business person who now occupies a public role, why you would want to venture into probably the same business that you were doing before you even venture into the public uh, role. The role of Rock City Hotel and Honorable Brian Achampo, these are two distinctive, in terms of law, these are two separate people. Of course, he is the executive chairman of the group. He's the owner. Yeah, he's the and owner. he is the owner of the place. Yeah, so how is it separate? But when you go to, when, when, when you, I am not a lawyer, but in law, an individual is always different from the business itself. No, unless, unless you decide not to be a part of the business, then it's different. But if it's your business that you are running, then it's your business. I, I am saying that in this case, he is the executive chairman, but he has people who are actually managing the business for him. He could have, he could have had the business, mm -hmm. had an executive chairman, mm -hmm. had people running the business. Mm -hmm. Then he has decided mm -hmm. to disassociate himself from it. Mm -hmm. Although the business is there, so he can be making money, but he doesn't care about it. Mm -hmm. But he has a role. Mm -hmm. He's the executive chairman. He mm -hmm. did not desist or he did not separate himself from the business. Now, proud to acquiring these facilities, was in a, 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 a minister of state? They are currently on the sale of the team, my brother. No, currently, the whole pro that thing <coughs> has not even <coughs> happened yet. Too. The process is still going it's on. It's still ongoing. And but, he but, actually showed interest before he took up this mm -hmm. position. No, but you know, one thing that we all have to know mm -hmm. is the fact that mm -hmm. as much as we are hearing that it's mm -hmm. not finalized, mm -hmm. he's the only person mm -hmm. who has been picked. Mm -hmm. Because he has been able to show to the team that indeed, I have the financial capacity to be able to manage the business. For that reason, they have given him the opportunity. Now, I've just seen an article online, mm. Ghana Web. 
where it is uh, being purported that proud to the NDC living office, and even on the same uh, show that Honorable Kujeta Blakwa uh, made these assertions, one of the panelists hinted that Honorable Kujeto's Ablakwa interest in petitioning Shraj or the NDC taking a staunch position in this whole project, it is because I do not want to mention him on the set. Continue. It is because when you look at the facility in Temali, the facility in um, Cape Coast, the one in Kumasi, and even in Sunyane, these are facilities that has been sold. I, I will share uh, the link to your producer. Please go ahead. Just say what you're saying. These facilities were actually sold to one big, high-ranking NDC guru. Which facility is that? I'm talking about the hotels. The one in Cape Coast, the one in Kumasi. The, you know the SNIT has in these very regions. And these are part of some of the listed ones that came out. It was initially six, but at the end of the day, it was four. Uh, four. Now, what I want us to understand is that the NDC's Lula Balu or Bruhaha in saying that, Emma, you know, Imano, it you is still all said, because... If, for me, you still haven't said much. If you say that mm -hmm. it's alleged that it was so, mm -hmm. how is it then that mm -hmm. SNIT ha still has the opportunity to sell it if it's been sold already? Yes, these people have, in, uh, they have shares in this very hotel. They feel that brand Achampo coming is going to take majority of the share. So, they, 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 are, they, are, they are right in terms of determining who does what and so what, what the goes The shares on. that they have, is mm -hmm. it majority shares? Mm -hmm. No, they don't have majority shares. They have, they don't have they majority, have minority shares. shares. Yes, they have minority and shares. And if you look at um, a bank like Stanchat, mm -hmm. they open shares all the time. If you look at MT and they open, MTN shares, open all shares all the time. All the time yeah. And so, yes. Most of these big companies have shareholders. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm a shareholder, I will be worried if my business is being sold, mm -hmm. especially if majority is being sold, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that you asked him a question, and he, 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 he said what? He has already distanced himself from the sale of the property. I said but I, I disagree with you. But I'm business. telling you that if it was the other way around, that these uh, properties are being sold to, a big no, man no, no. in the other side. You are, you are conjecturing. We would, we would not be having <laughs> these issues no. coming up to the public domain. But currently, we don't but have it happening. But the issue has to do with one thing we need to look at in all of this discussion is, one, and I stated this earlier on, whether the man in question or Rock City in question has some sort of credibility. The question here is about credibility. And again, the financial capacity to be able to manage this hotels if it comes out that the man in question or the business in question has the financial capacity has the credibility before the public i'll ask you this and question this hotel has these hotels mm -hmm. have been running mm -hmm. some as long as 35 years sure. how long has brian champo run rock city hotel of course it's running less than 10 years no, less than five years. years. That's fine. And you, you are telling me that somebody who has run a hotel less than five years has mm -hmm. a lot of credibility to run a hotel mm -hmm. that has been sustained for 35 years? Now, what, what informed the publication of people to show interest in the sale of the shares? What informed that? That's, that, that's why we are seated here. So It has to do with profitability issue. Mm. It has to do with probably management issues. It has to do with one thing or the other. And for that reason, the managers or the shareholders felt that we have to probably share part of ourselves so that we we'll have shares being uh, shared. So that at the end of the day, one organization or the organization may not be suffering from these losses. Again, another thing we need to also understand is that, you see, Brian Achampo, I think that at any point in time when his name pops up, then it, it ah. is questionable. Now, on the ordinary, I'm coming. Ordinarily, if it is just somebody like me who probably does not have businesses, who is buying, I'm coming, no, I'm coming. No, who I, is I, buying I haven't this, said anything, though. Who is <laughs> buying this business? Then I think that the entire MPP fraternity should take uh, whatever, whatever, and be chasing me because I do not have the financial muscles to 
handle this. But in this case, he talk about whether two years or three years, but he has shown to us that he has the credibility. The the two words of running a, a, a the hotel two words five years. Yes, as credibility and financial capacity for running a hotel because five years. of course and these hotels cannot be compared. Let's not forget, mm -hmm. Rock City Hotel mm -hmm. cannot be compared to Labadi Beach Hotel. I am saying it and I'll say it on record. You are saying you are saying, saying that and you have that for a fact. I am saying this because this mm -hmm. hotel has mm -hmm. lasted for thirty five years. Now mm -hmm. any hotel mm -hmm. that has stood the test of time, mm -hmm. running a hotel for five years hasn't stood the test of time. Mm -hmm. You haven't gone into opposition to know what test of time is. Mm -hmm. Now this hotel thirty five years has been mm -hmm. running mm -hmm. stood the test of time. There were mm -hmm. times that it went down. It came mm. up. It went down. It came up. There was a time that they had to even shut it for renovations and everything. It has stood the test of time. You cannot tell me that a hotel that has been built within five years under an administration that is in government mm. can be compared but, but, to But it. you are aware that Honorable Brian Achapo is a businessman. Before he entered but nobody into said politics. He's not. Before he became a minister of state. Nobody said he's not. Before he became an MP. Nobody said so he's not. So that tells but you that it did not start from somewhere. I think we are deviating from... No, the we are not the, deviating. The concern, the uh, concern not. is not about Honorable Barney Champon. The concern is mm -hmm. about the fact that mm -hmm. properties that belong to the state mm -hmm. is being be sold. sold to. Properties that belong to you and I, that mm -hmm. we contribute our quota, mm -hmm. it's not just our quota, our sweat, mm -hmm. our toil mm -hmm. goes into it, mm -hmm. should not just be sold mm -hmm. at our backs because we do nothing about it. Mm -hmm. We don't. We, we keep talking about it being transparent. How transparent is it? If you ask the ordinary Ghanaian out there mm -hmm. who contributes to Westnet, they mm -hmm. don't even know anything about it. Mm -hmm. So how transparent has it been? Parliament hasn't even approved it. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing we know, Parliament should even approve it. It's still, and that is the reason why Honorable Okujeto Ablakwa raised this issue, that it's happening at the blind side of Parliament. So if Parliament doesn't know, not me, not me. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's so not as transparent. That, that probably means that you and I have not taken the time to probably oh, see no. the advertisement when it was published. So that at the end of the day, you and I would have probably joined a partnership to show interest. <laughs> no, that would have been a nice thing, but because yeah. we did not see it, yeah. we I, did not show interest can I, can I to come in? procure yeah. that. Yeah. Okay, but sure. Okay, I, I think, look, whatever we are saying today here on this platform, and whatever that is happening, whether he's qualified or not, the constitution of this country is supreme. And it has stated it clearly as to what constitutes a person becoming a complicit of what? A conflict of interest. It is stated there. And they have given you conditions as to what and how you can, be, you can go up along with your normal business. Look, you are, you, are, you are just defending an illegality. Oh, yes, <laughs> of course. You are defending an illegality because the Constitution has mentioned it clearly. And instead of us to be looking at what the constitution, the enshrinement of the constitution, and going by it, we are defending somebody. And I earlier on told you that look, it is him today. Let's don't do this and put ourselves into a certain quagma, a certain uh, <coughs> instance where people can come and base on it and also do something of that sort. It's dangerous to ourselves here as we speak. Look, um, you, you also mentioned that whenever <laughs> there is the name of Brana Champong and he made some actions this way, I, I would have loved to uh, uh, know what you mean by uh, uh, doing this way. You, you spoke about credibility. Are you saying that? Look, are you saying that Ghana has no credible, it's not credible enough to be able to manage hotels? <coughs> are you saying that Ghana, has, Ghana is not credible enough to be able to manage hotels? Is that what you're saying? Then that should be under your regime because under our regime, we are in selling hotels. Under the regime of his, as long as you join the money, we want to say hotel. But, but please, Labadi, please, Labadi please, Beach please, Hotel struggled please. a little bit under your regime. Of course, that's what I'm saying. That every, everything, every business at all struggles. And then every business, if you go as despite and all those big, big people, they will tell you that their business has gone through a little bit of struggle. But they rebounce and then go ahead to do their businesses. Doesn't mean that they sell those businesses because... Uh, and it's a state property. Like I mentioned, that look, it's a state property that myself and you contribute to. It's not for Senate. The money is there, it's not for Senate. It encourages people to contribute to what? That uh, Senate. I want to tell you that, look, President Mohammed's government will be capable of managing a hotel, OK? And so don't sell it. If you cannot manage it, leave it. By the grace of God, 7 December, we will vote in his SLC John Ramani. But who says he'll and be, he will be sworn, one. Please, he'll be sworn in <laughs> in January. Can, if anybody's please, game, please. you know that. 
Come again. It's anybody's game. We have, uh, you know, um, Nana Kwame Bediako, who is contesting keenly. We have um, Alan Chemate, who is contesting keenly. Yeah. So it's anybody's game. No, my, my, what, who I, the person I know who can be able to uh, manage the affairs of this country is His Excellency John Daman in period. Okay. He is the person that has brought up policies that uh, is, is, is admiring those policies that you, you know that they are, even TLC has accepted that the 24 hour economy President Mahama mentioned is visible and we, you can be able to do it. Just recently, we mentioned to you the Women's Bank, which of course you yourself and, uh, and my sister at home can be able to do uh, business with as little loans and loans that we were given to them to be doing their business. These are policies we need, from, uh, we need to hear from uh, our, our, our leaders. And that is exactly what President Mahama is mentioning to our people. Look, just, um, I think, when you talk of credibility, the NDC is not entirely against issues of uh, shares and those things. No, nobody says that <laughs> when you are giving shares out, it's, it's a button. But we are only saying that Ghana is capable enough to be able to do what? To be able to uh, manage a, a hotel. And so if Ghana is able to man can be able to manage a hotel, much of the shares should be left for government to mine. <coughs> that is exactly what I'm trying to say. So look, it's, it's, it's absolutely neither here nor there for you to say that, oh, uh, Brian Champagne is credible enough to be able to, mine, uh, to buy. A no, that's not what I'm saying. That's what my sister just mentioned to you, that he just mined his hotel for only five years. And a person that has mined a hotel for five years, the person stands to be credible than a government that has mined hotels for about 30 years. All right, let's, let's go into our messages, but don't forget to go to Franco Trading Enterprise to get all your gadgets, okay? Is it mobile phone you want? Is it laptops? Is it television sets? CCTV cameras, refrigerators? We have that and even many more. We, we have accessories. You can actually download the app on your phone, Franco Trading app. Just download it. It's simple for fair fit. And then you purchase from them. Or you can visit our website www.francotradingenterprise.com or visit any of our shops and come shop with us. You stand a chance of probably, you know, we'll give you some good discount. When you get to us, just tell us. You watch on Joy Prime, so you want discount. We'll give it to you. Let's see what messages we have. Good morning, Madam Host. No amount of lies will intimidate. Lies, propaganda, propaganda will stop. Dr. Baumia will become the next president of the Republic of Ghana. It is possible. Okay. Good morning, Roslyn. Hey. Create loot and share be this. That's why Brandy Champo and the president said they will not hand over power to different parties. Hmm. The future is pregnant. They should continue buying the state properties. <laughs> Good morning. Please kindly tell the MPP guy that Brian was a minister of state who gave the command for the barbaric act at Ayawaso West. So he was a minister when the transaction was stated. And if it's about credibility, Ibrahim Mahama was equally competent. But they, the NPP, refused him. So what are they saying? The MPs are not supposed to make profit. And what at all are we looking for in this temporarily home? And we must know that this world is not our home. And when we die, you are talking nothing. You are taking nothing with you. A word to the wise is enough. Stampede, Adenta. Stamp, you have made Stampede quote us the Bible today. Good morning to you. The local government system in Ghana plays a critical role in promoting democratic governance, enhancing service delivery, and empowering local communities. However, there is still room for improvement in terms of addressing the challenges that exist within the system by strengthening the capacity of local officials, increasing funding of MMDAs, and enhancing coordination between national and local government entities. Ghana can further strengthen its local governance system and better serve the needs of its citizens. Aero Bebako Kokomisa. Okay, so this one says the high rose OSP should stop targeting poor teachers who are living in, on slave wages and go after corrupt politicians who stash millions of dollars in their homes, including people who had illegal salaries worth millions of CDs with arrears from 2017 under the guise of Article 71 workers. Again, OSP must leave teachers alone and go after the ghost names of the Jubilee House who were discovered by Parliament and leave innocent teachers who don't pay themselves. Oh, OSP Abreu. Hmm. <laughs> Some more about Kesey. I'm wondering and disgusting why you people are against Honorable Brian Echampo winning the bidding of the sales of the said hotel. Why is he not a Ghanaian? And if he qualifies to acquire, didn't he and 
did he and follow all the okay, did he follow the process? Follow fellow Ghanaians uh, voting for Dr. Baumia is doing reasonable thing for your bright future. Let's not be deceived by the detractors and seek to breaking the eight is possible to protect the free SHS. Regards to Honorable Charles A. Champo, the MP Fasamakeso and Frank Siedu Bekoi Protozoa. Good morning, Rosalind. As the MPP man to tell Ghanaians what they have done that successive government can also sell if necessary. Eesh. <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Host. Uh, for state properties, every government will sell. NDC sold. MPP are selling. The last thing that these politicians will sell is Ghanaians. Nana will go. So Nana will be sold. Eh? Not me. Me and my family will not be sold. I always say that this government came to power with eyes gorge on oil, gold, taxes, and state properties. Read the Japadier documents and save yourself from heart heartache. Ricardo Bichim. This is Japadier that people are talking about. Yesterday, somebody sent it to me. Hey, hmm. Hmm. No, no, One minute acidity I have for <laughs> a train. So Ghanaians have <laughs> never have never witnessed <clears throat> abysmal performance under the MPP government before. MPP government, led by President Kufado, has disappointed Ghanaians totally. My regards to Honorable Kofi Bentil, incoming PC for Mpoho constituency. Hey, Ghana for. Hmm. Anyway, let's continue to our next topic. Our next conversation, um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has spoken. Now, he visited uh, the, is it the Wana, right? Yeah, Wana. The Wana. And, uh, you know, upon talking, he did say that they are both sons that hail from the same place. He's talking about himself and John Dramani Muhammad. They hail from the same place. And he told the Wana that he had, t he had actually pleaded with John Dramani Muhammad to give him the opportunity to take the mantle since he has never been a president before. However, John Dramani Muhammad has been a president before. This sparked a lot of conversations online where people felt it was not a a statement that he should have made at all. And as some people also feel that, is a presidency a place that everybody goes to just occupy and leave? Or is it about credibility? Who can actually solve situations? Because currently, Ghana is in a situation where we need a messiah. Whether we like it or not, we need a messiah. So is it just we going to occupy or somebody can solve the problem? Now, uh, let me start this again with you, Emmanuel, because I, I, I started the first one with you. So let me start with you again. Well, I think that um, the vice president called for the former president to allow him to become president. It's a call in the right direction. It was not a petition, but it was as a result of he informing his fathers or his father, who is the one of the war um, traditional enclave. Now, he indicated that um, both of us are your sons. And for that matter, it is only prudent that uh, one, for you to understand that one has been a president before. I have not been a president before. And you and I know that he has not been a president before. He is only a vice president. Now, it is also important for us to also know that one who has been a president before, we have seen his handwriting. We have seen what he has done. We have seen that under his tenure, nurses and teachers training allowances were canceled. We have seen that under his tenure, chalks to even write in the classrooms were nowhere to be found. We have seen that under his tenure, we have had the worst doom so for almost three years. We have seen that under his tenure, he is the president in the history of Ghana who has been beaten by over one million votes. You can continue to name them and name them. And at a point when even the youth were even crying for jobs. They said he's not a magician to create jobs. Let me ask you this with regards to the doom so. I was expecting you to come up to that. Yes, I'm, I'm, uh, ask me. Feel free and ask. Under President Rollins, was there doom so? So I'm, a, I'm an energy student. The issue of. No, you didn't answer the question. Was uh, there doom so? Under President Rawlings, there was. Under uh, Kofor was there Dumso? There was, there was. And uh, Atamils was there Dumso? There was. And uh, Mahama was there Dumso? There was. And uh, Kufa was there Dumso? There wasn't Dumso. There's no Dumso? No. So what are we experiencing? We are experiencing localized faults within areas. 
Yes, this is what we are experiencing. What do we understand by doing so? Okay, explain. Now, if we have had, for when was the last time you slept in darkness? Don't tell me that I guess yesterday. Yeah, I'm, I just told you. Don't tell me that I, I guess yesterday. But I just told you. But I'm fact. telling you that. I just told you. If you want to talk about doom so, even admitting, admitting that it, it is what you are telling it to be, if, if, if even it is, how many months or years did we experience doom so in John Muhammad's era compared to the two, three months interrupted service that we are having today. You want to say that what we are experiencing today compared to what we had where generators, handbag generators were being sold, people were losing their businesses, businesses were closing down. You want to compare that to what we are experiencing today? You think businesses no. are not closing down today? Well, I don't know how many businesses, I have, I have not heard of businesses being closed down. Really? Yes, the recent one, that the media did not even do due diligence before throwing in, uh, their tantrums to say that businesses are closing up. Oh, as, 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 as media house. Because one went on the street. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the media house. It's the people that spoke. Somebody said. So it was, it was appropriate that the media houses would have taken further steps to do cross, like multiple checks, to be certain, because the game is about fat checking. You check your facts before you let things out. If you don't check your facts, at the end of the day, it comes back hitting at your face. Mm. And you agree with me. What about the hospitals that had to experience them so? The hospitals were experiencing this uninterrupted power display because wherever area they are, if there are localized situations or challenges within their the area, will still go off. it will affect them. So what I had an ECG boss proposing or some uh, 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 civil society groups advocating for is to ensure that they are actually separated from the main meters or the main zones where those localized faults are actually happening. So that at the end of the day, they do also not go through those processes. But you see, let me not forget about my main point. Please continue with your point. I just, I, I, I am saying I that okay. the former president, he is somebody whose handwriting we have seen from class one to JHS, JHS three. And we've known how poorly, badly, how he is filled as far as he's been a former vice, uh, former vice president, former president. Compared to somebody who is now wanting to be president. He said, I have not been a president before. Joyce Lynn, or Rosalind, it is one thing where well, I am- I have a girlfriend called I am, No, please. It is one thing coming to you to tell you that. Allow Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, he has not been a president before. He has not served as an ECOWAS chairman before. But the former president, Joe Mahama, he has served as a president. We have seen how poorly, how badly he's performed. But the, 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 the vice president is saying that, give him the opportunity to become president. When he becomes the president, at least if or nothing at all, he has the opportunity, should he be given the opportunity, when he has that, he will have eight years to become the president and will even do much more better than somebody who has only four terms should he be given the opportunity. Now, don't also forget that the former president, JM, he has told us that four years is not enough to actually develop a country. So that tells you that his four years that he's coming is either he comes for a honeymoon or he's coming to come and probably talk about homegrown players. As of now, Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Bamiya is the only formidable candidate who's been, who has been actually outspoken, who has been able to outline his bold solutions to the crisis we are going through today. Emmanuel, thank you. I like the fact that you ended with the crisis that we are going through today. Whose government is in power? It is our government. And who is causing the crisis? 
We do not, we never, we never distance ourselves that there are no crises. Okay, so you accept that there are crises. No, I think so that these why, are... Why do you want to I maintain that, power? Are, You're telling me that there's somebody so who caused crisis, crisis in the past. The person was voted out. Mm -hmm. You are in power. Mm -hmm. You are accepting that there are crises. Mm -hmm. But you are the same person telling me that. Don't bring the Proud person to there, 20. but I can solve the crisis. <coughs> Meanwhile, we are in the crisis that has not been solved. Proud, to, can 20, solve it, solve proud it. to 2020 or proud to the COVID and then the Russian-Ukraine war. When you say this, a lot of people say that the whole world. every, every now and the then. World. See, I have seen countless occasions. I've read the number of countries that are struggling. It is not even just Africa. Even the ones we even look at for, they are struggling. Because the Russian-Ukraine war, the COVID has actually caused a lot of havoc to a lot of nations. So for me, I think that Dr. Baumia has admitted the father, yes, he admits that we are not in normal times. However, I have not been a president. John Dramani Mahama, the former president, he has been a president before. So we shall allow him. Give me the opportunity. Okay. Let me come in and experience me for at least four years. Then you can now renew my mandate for the next four years, at least for the eight years to be completed. Okay. That is what he's calling Okay, for. so he, he wants us to vote for him for a minimum of four years. But we shouldn't give John Dramani Mahama the opportunity to be there for four years. I'm saying that. No, it's just a question, though. It is, it, it is not just a minimum of four years. But I'm saying that... No, is, but that's what he said. This is my own statement. No, no, no. That, that was his statement. He said yesterday. that he has eight years. Yes, and that John Romani has mm -hmm. only four years. Four years. But we vote per four years. We don't vote per eight years. So what shows but, that... But don't forget that John Romani Mahama knows that. He's not coming back again. No, but wait. What shows that uh -huh. the Ghanaian people mm -hmm. will vote you back into power after four years? Because he will perform. Okay. Because as a vice president worldwide, he has, in the history of Ghana, he's you can take it or leave it. Mm. And I'm sure that those who have credible eyes, those who are actually in tune with what is happening, they will tell you that regardless of the politicking in the history of Ghana, His Excellency Alaji Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is the only vice president who has performed in the history of Ghana. Mm. And there's no two ways <laughs> about that. And he's doing it. For that matter, he's, he's, the, that. he's the same person who says that Every failure that has happened, he does not associate himself with it. I, I don't know where he said that. But it's, it's, I don't know where he, he said, said that. He tell me that I am not the driver, Rosling. I am the mate. And that when I come, the policies Rosling. that have been put I in place. I distance myself from that statement. And I don't ever remember the vice president saying that. Let me, let me say this. Okay. If a vice president says to the people of Ghana mm -hmm. that my government is in power, mm -hmm. my government brought e-levy, mm -hmm. my government has brought certain taxes, mm -hmm. but when I come to power, mm -hmm. I will make sure that these taxes mm -hmm. are scrapped. Mm -hmm. These things are not done, mm -hmm. but you are still in power. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? So what it means is that it is one thing being with your parents and one thing being independent as Rosalind. So then how do you perform? When you are with your parents, the kind of things you do will be limited. Okay. But when you become independent on your own, and that is what the vice president is talking about, at the moment, he is serving under his excellence in another's government. But when the opportunity is given to him, come 7 January 2025, All right. he will now have the steer yeah, let me go to, to be Bashiru. able to my, drive my you and I, my, rustling, my time is limited, and be Bashiru. able to cancel the E-Levy yes, and Manuel. all of that. So that at the end of the day, we can have a flat tax rate. We can be able to open the... That's got for everybody. Emmanuel, let me, let me put to Bashiru. By time, I have, the, let me, I have Let me, let me put on that. record yes. that His Excellency Mahmoud Baumia, and I can understand why my brother is sweating even under this <laughs> uh, <laughs> air condition. <laughs> I can understand. You see, he is the boss of the EMT of this country, the economic management team of this country. He's the boss. When uh, the senior minister was on the platform saying that uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia uh, has led the economy team so well and then they are going to improve on the economy. He was still there nodding his head and laughing. Today, he has seen that things are going bad. And so he's disassociating himself from it. He has now become a driver mate. When in fact, the situations of this country boils down to our economy. It is the reason for why President Akufodo appointed him as a rally mate at the first place, of which he became a vice president of this country. He handed over the 
the whole economic team and the management of the economy to him. It was evident when the senior minister, the former senior minister, mentioned that he is the manager, he's the, he's the boss of that economic management team. So anything that is coming out of it down, if it is good, it is for him. If it is bad, it is for him. Now that it is going bad, these are his comments. He's a driver mate. Well, a driver mate takes money, right? And when it's not drive the car. Yeah, of course. You but you, you take the money, right? And when you take the money, you sometimes influence the decision of the driver. In the case of President Kufordo and Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya, he has influenced anything that is in relation to the economy. It's a fact. We didn't say it. They said it themselves. Look, it is better next time when you are talking about the economy, or let me say, when you go to places to talk or to solicit for votes, the only thing you and I need now as young men, our fathers and our mothers, what we need now is good policies. At least now, <laughs> President Mama wants to become a president again, right? Dr. Mahmoud Duhamia wants to become a president. The only thing that would make us to uh, have some trust in them is when you come out with beautiful policies. Whilst President Mama is talking about 24-hour economy, somebody is dancing on stage. No, but I, for that, no, I, don't, please, I, don't, please. I don't subscribe to it. No, <laughs> please. I don't. No, where first? I'm going. No, no, no. I'm coming. I don't see oh. where the dance here has I'm become coming. a I'm problem coming. for Look, you. It is a problem Somebody because... Somebody decides to dance it was a tells stage, his it was a stage, wrong excuse with it. Me, it was a stage where he was supposed to use that platform in telling the people of Ghana what he can do for the people of Ghana. He not say... Oh, what did he did not he tell them? What did the he fact say? that he danced doesn't mean that he still didn't... So, so let, me, let me make my point. Look, under his ancestry, John Damani Mahama, or let me see, you even ask the question of uh, whether Jerry John Rollins time, as to whether there was doing so or not. There was doing so. Kofor's time, there was doing so. Uh, President Mohammed's time, there was doing so. Currently, Akufo, President Akufo's time, there's doing so. Well, the question then comes out. What was causing the doing so at that time? It was because we couldn't uh, produce enough energy for people to consume. As simple as that. Now, when President Mama came, he identified the problem and said, I am going to solve the problem once and for all. That's why this Ameri plant and this car power plants, all these things, uh, gas from Nigeria to Ghana and those to supply those uh, plants, that's why he made great investment in making sure that those things come to Ghana. Now, your doom saw is anchored on incompetence. And I'm saying incompetence because you're not able to, able to even get fun, money, l'argent, to do what? To pay, for, to pay for electricity, to pay those uh, suppliers to supply it. IPP is IPPs. IPPs good. To pay IPPs to provide electricity. It's just like uh, <laughs> Joy News, uh, in, in, uh, how do you call it? In, uh, Joy Prime. I come and uh, wire this whole place for you. And I said, okay, anytime it is dark, we're on the line. You have under one minute to finish. Oh, you gave me enough time. Please, it's just me. It's oh, time. please. So you, okay, I'm coming. So you gave him, uh, I mean, you, you, you set a lies for somebody to be on it. You have established everything. President Mama has established everything for you. It just led with you to be, to, be, to be giving what? Electricity. I mean, to be paying for the IPPs to be producing electricity for us. And you call such a person an incompetent person. A person who has been able to bring generational power plants to be used. Someone that is not able to bring, uh, uh, is not able to pay uh, IPPs, he's not, rather in, uh, uh, competent. Now, just to land on this, whenever you are talking about uh, competence, I think it will be prudent enough for you to take a sober look at the economic indicators. You anchored your com campaign on a dollar rate in 2016. That, oh, when you come to power, <coughs> the dollar will be for four, four for everybody to be able to manage. At the end of the day, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are packing those dollars under some dear Cecilia uh, <laughs> the pest bed. Anyway, now, the, the, I'm coming, that's the last, that's the last point. Up. Oh, the, the time, Make uh, please. Make your point quick. Good. So, up, please. under his SSG, mm -hmm. the rate of a dollar was four Ghana cities. Under our time now, it's 15 Ghana cities and counting. All right. Even... 
thank you very much, <laughs> unfortunately. So thank you so much for being here, gentlemen. Thank you. We've, we've actually done over an hour. We've done an hour. You, you've given him more no, time you than, time to than I other than topics. So don't worry. Um, so my guests have been Emmanuel Senor Amekplenu, who represents... Oh, you've know, uh, had a many Oh, how? Uh, <laughs> you've had a lot of time. Represented the NPP <laughs> and Bashir Amatana, who represented the NDC this she, morning. Gentlemen, she, she thank you so like much for being here. I wish I had all day to to have a conversation. You know, when it comes to these things, we can never finish with this conversation. No, but I think it would have been very fair for me to... Don't worry. Next time, next time you get like one hour <laughs> to two. Because it is important. <laughs> it's all fine with family. Karana has given you a uh, reading since you originally is doing for the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. And this so segment, oh, now, please yeah. wait for me. Don't okay. worry. This segment is proudly brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Make sure you get all your gadgets from Franco Trading Enterprise. And make sure that you download the app on your phone, Franco Trading app, or visit the website, www.francotradingenterprise.com. And we'll tell you a little bit about our Impact Makers Award. So join News Impact Makers Award. And very soon, right after what's trending, we'll come sit down and let you understand what it's all about. But know that that segment is definitely coming your way too. So stay with us. My name is Rosalie Feli. We'll be right back. News Flash is brought to you by Franco Trading Enterprise. Steel. Fun. Pa, 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 fear.